Um, it's all very well talking about Jersey's problems, of which we're all very well aware, but really it's what you, the public, want to know, is what we, the candidates, are actually going to do about it. How are we going to make a difference? And not simply slip into oblivion once we uh, become uh, state members. So first of all, I'd like to tell you why I believe I'm qualified for the senatorial vacancy. I have a good acade academic education. I have many uh, engineering qualifications. I once worked as a civil servant myself for the Ministry of Defence, so I know how the public service operates. I've run my own successful business for nearly 40 years, and my record as a state's deputy for 10 years, I believe, speaks for itself. Hardworking, outspoken, and intimidated by no one. And apart from Stuart, I believe I'm probably the only candidate who has served in our committee system of government. I served on public services, housing, telecoms, and other committees. So I know how our public service operates. So I'm one of the few who can actually compare the committee system with the shambles that masquerades as ministerial government. <laughs> now, what is wrong with everything? Sure, we can worry about members having free sandwiches or whether or not cyclists should wear helmets. How many states members there should be? Meanwhile, Jersey is slowly going bankrupt. There are a thousand things wrong. But we can't deal with them all at once. We have to prioritise, which is why my platform throughout uh, all these hustings has been a simple one, to reduce public expenditure and sort out the ministerial government. I'm actually flattered uh, by the fact my fellow candidates, who all started out with vague ideas and not too many memories, are now copying men, calling for cuts and accountability at the top of our civil service. Well, I have to advise them, they may have stolen my gun, but I still have the ammunition. <laughs> As I said last night, if you don't control your overheads, you go bust. An easy option of balancing books by raising taxes must be avoided because, rather like a business raising its prices, it makes you uncompetitive. In Jersey's case, that means financial services will probably relocate to a lower cost area, will have fewer tourists and more difficulties for businesses generally. Of course, we can pretend it's not a problem. We can look the other way or um, advocate making matters worse for the tax and spend culture. Well, that's fine if we want to end up like Greece or maybe the UK. I don't want to see our island go like that. And as those other countries have found out, the longer you leave sorting the problem out, the more painful is the remedy. Jersey really is at a financial crossroads. Between now and the next election, there are two budgets. So we can either take the easy option of increased taxation or we can reduce wasteful expenditure. I believe it's crazy that Jersey has over 8,000 civil servants for an island of this size. A police force that's one of the highest paid in the world. I believe it's the second highest paid in the world. And departments that overspend their annual budget by around about 16 million pounds annually. So how do I propose to solve this problem? Well, for start, I'm tired of hearing that it's a waste of time of voting because one person can't do anything. What's the point? That is not true. So please make an effort to vote on the 16th. A states member can achieve much with the right propositions, provided he has the respect of his fellow members. I always did. So together with my state's experience, if elected, I would start effective work on June the 17th, something a new member could not. I was a state member for 10 years. What is it I propose to do? Well, the scaremongering that reducing public expenditure would result in cuts to frontline services and mass unemployment is, in my view, irresponsible. What is needed, and I'm confident of persuading the states to adopt such a proposition, is a root and branch review of our public services, separating necessary services from the simply nice to have, reviewing salaries and giving new recruits, revised contracts, outlawing restrictive practices, streamlining management structures, making departments responsible and their staff accountable. It really is unacceptable that no matter how serious a mistake is made, no one is ever held responsible. That simply, in my view, that simply encourages the wrong attitude and it would be totally unacceptable in the private sector. Basically, in my view, we need private sector accountability and efficiency in our public sector, and I'm promising to provide it. Thank you for listening.